What kind of man is the man up front? He's a man with a job that once would have been considered impossible. He sits in the nose of a huge metal tube, sometimes blasting through sub-zero gale force winds of the high altitudes. He is responsible for seeing that his passengers the ride comfortable and convenient. He has a working knowledge of, among other things, aerodynamics, electronics, hydraulics, weather radar, and meteorology. As a flyer, he is a postgraduate who never stops going to school. At specified intervals, every United Airlines captain, first officer, and second officer returns to this flight training center in Denver, Colorado. They come, like Captain Wesley, for recurrent training to recheck their proficiency on the equipment they fly regularly. Others, like Captain McCoy, come for transition training to qualify on equipment they haven't flown before. Some, like John Newhouse, are newly hired trainees. He will be trained in the most advanced commercial pilot training center in existence, a complex as flexible as the changing needs of the future. John Newhouse started flying years ago, earning a private pilot's license, single engine rating. With additional flying and ground school, he added a multi-engine rating. More flying, more instruction, and finally, he earned a commercial pilot's license. As a result, and after careful screening, he now qualifies for airline flight training as a second officer. His rating here, beginner. John will become familiar with the world's largest concentration of electronic flight simulators. John will complete this phase of his training at the adjoining airfield, where actual jet liners are used for training flights. Pick up air from the forward accessory compartment. All or part of the training offered may be taken by other airmen through the contract training division. Okay, gentlemen, as far as electrical power is concerned... The size of the facility allows the company to provide training for men from other U.S. airlines, as well as private and business pilots. Pilots from many European countries. Canada, Japan, Pakistan, or Mexico. Excuse me, when we use the standby power, how long does it last? You may even bump into a celebrity. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Hey, that's Arnold Palmer. How are you? Arnie is a licensed pilot who flies his own business jet. He's here for a refresher course and to learn to fly one of the really big jobs. We approach the heading, it calls for a rollout maneuver. Now this is really, again, not operating... Uh... There was a period of six years in the life of Captain Len McCoy when he had nothing to do with airplanes. Then. He built his first scale model at the age of seven. Well, it could have been worse. What do you think about, about this uh, reverse thrust on the 727? Well, say, that reminds me of the last trip into San Francisco. Uh, when the captain landed, there seemed to be a great deal of that sense. In the tip tanks. And then if we would have lost a, an engine on takeoff, we could have, you know, dropped our reversing procedure for the co-pilot. Well, I think it's uh, something we should have been doing a long time. Yeah, I do too. Interest, attention, enthusiasm. When the subject is flying, as it most often is, the audience is dedicated. Listen to a man who understands and shares this dedication. Captain Jim Cross, 
director of the United Airlines Flight Training Center. Speaking as a pilot and the director of the Flight Training Center, it's my opinion that pilot training is not like most other types of instruction. For one thing, you don't have to be concerned about them being interested. It's their chosen field, and they recognize how vital training is to their career. Let's take a look at the 720 electrical system. We have on the airplane four generators. Videotape is just one of the methods the instructors use to evaluate their own techniques. The majority of the huge staff are experienced pilots or subject specialists. Requirements of the aircraft. If you were to lose one flight training here is a long jump from previous methods. In the past, pilots were taught as though they were going to build the airplane as well as fly it. And it was a hangover from this. There was a romantic image of the old biplane stunt pilot climbing out on the wing to repair a broken strut. Pretty far-fetched in the supersonic age. In modern jetliners, everything vital in the structure has a backup. If one part should ever fail, another takes over, usually automatically. No pilot will ever be climbing out on this wing with a pair of flyers. Would you give me the steps in an electrical fire? Or Captain something? Wesley's progress will be monitored by flight standards, a control group that constantly verifies the quality of the training. Then moving to a flight simulator with the check pilot present, Captain Wesley will demonstrate his ability to command the airplane with all systems normal and abnormal. Behind each simulator is an electronic computer that responds to every signal from the cockpit. All instruments duplicate their normal function, even to showing engine temperatures and the rate at which fuel is being used. Hydraulic cylinders reproduce the climbing, banking, turning, and descending maneuvers. D1, get the power. VR. You're up. You're up. E2. Four plus four. Fire number four. Check the fuel ignition. Missile's on. Take care of it, Monty. After Captain Wesley has proved his competence in any and all emergency situations, a check pilot joins the crew for additional proficiency review on the actual aircraft. When they pass all tests and demonstrate that they maintain the proficiency required, Captain Wesley and his crew will return to line duty. The trainee program takes seven weeks. But for the first several weeks, John Newhouse will fly nothing higher than desk level. McCoy's thousands of flying hours make his transition to four-engine equipment smooth. And despite its complexity, he's ready to master the larger airplane. Just a minute. I appreciate the image, and I'll try to look like the intrepid aviator. But if you get the impression a pilot up here is busier than a go-go dancer, you're wrong. Most of these electrical and fuel controls are set prior to flight. We have navigational instruments to keep us on course, radar to tell us when there's weather ahead we may want to fly around. We're in constant contact with ground stations who monitor our flight and make sure no other planes are in our vicinity or flying at our altitude. These instruments that look so confusing to the non-flyer are largely safety insurance. They mostly free the pilot to concentrate on the job of getting the airplane from one airport to another. But even Captain McCoy will have to admit that imparting that know-how takes considerable doing. Pilots can master a new aircraft in a few weeks for two reasons. One, 
their acquired experience in flying jets. The other is a human behavioral approach to flight instruction. We've been so highly trained in the past that we don't have to cover a lot of material. So we're able to sift that out. And the portion that remains is that which is really meaningful and necessary. In other words, instead of you having to sit down there in the evenings and decide what's important and what isn't, we're trying to make that decision beforehand through a, this behavioral analysis and then only deliver to you the meaningful product. And the human behavioral concept presents this information in ways men can best absorb and utilize. You're still interested in, we can make them. Can be opened and then closed manually by the second officer. Audiovisual training aids offer slide programs on any subject an individual pilot desires to review. They learn a principle. See where to apply. RPM. Understand how it works. Release. Then spend hours practicing it. Start valve close. Special attention is given to emergency safety equipment, even to the practice of quick deplaning. Flight crews are trained to function as a team in any situation. Trainee John Newhouse is being taught the fundamentals of high altitude flying. Here he learns meteorology and the use of airborne weather radar. Contrary to what most people believe, a radar does not actually see thunderstorms. It sees the drops of water contained in the thunderstorms. And John's first line duty will be as second officer. And this is just one of the panels he will know as well as if he had designed it. All pilots will know the operational uses of each system. Mac, tell me the two problems that will turn on this turbo compressor overheat warning light. Either high compressor oil temperature or low airflow. Bernie, how do you tell which problem has illuminated the light? Turn that compressor off and watch the cabin rate a climb. If it indicated a climb, the oil was too hot. If the rate of climb shows no change, low flow is the problem. How about the overheat light? The high oil temp. What do you do if you turn that system off? How many recirc fans? All three. How many in flight? Just the center and the right fan. What units are controlled by these? Freon, heat exchanger doors, and when does this condenser fan operate? What's this light for? What's required for... What's rough airspeed? What's VMO? What is maximum CDS temperature rise? Are fuel feed pumps required? What is normal hydraulic temperature? What's VA? What is maximum pneumatic temperature? Normal pneumatic pressure? AC loads in flight. Oil pressure? Minimum fuel temperature? What's maximum fuel load? Undumpable fuel load? What's a hot start and what do you do? Oil temperature. Will Freon work during... What's required for... What is minimum crew? Flap speeds. What is maximum pneumatic temperature? What's minimum oil brake pressure? Denver Tower, United 2002 is ready to go in sequence. United 2002, cleared for takeoff, runway 35. And it is rolling. Arnie, too, will have had to answer the questions before he takes off. In one of the most sophisticated machines in modern jet training, the flight simulator. Playing in the simulator, just as in the actual 737, Arnie is able to feel all the controls. Even buffeting is the real thing in here. 12 degrees, gets pretty heavy. Okay, there it is. Nose down and thrust. When Arnie has mastered instrument flying on this flight deck, he can be the man up front in one of the 737s waiting outside. Okay, we've got our speed back, so you can recover back up to 10 back. As a senior captain, Captain Wesley has bid for a larger aircraft and will soon begin transition training. Gentlemen, tomorrow in the simulator, for Captain McCoy, we'll be having abnormal each simulator emergency flight procedures. begins in the briefing now, one room. Of these procedures might be it is approached with all the off. attention that goes into we actual flight, except that here the emphasis light, is upon unique bell. problems. Now you may either fly the airplane yourself 
and ask the other man to run the procedure, or you can ask him to fly while you run the procedure. Now the first step in the procedure, of course, is to identify the engine that we have the fire on by the light in the fire shut off lever handles. Then we're going to punch out the master fire warning light to silence the bell. Fuel shut off lever to the fuel off, fire shut off lever to the fold down position. To climb aboard. While the other instructor files the flight plan with the simulator control tower. In the next hour, this crew will deal with more problems than they have faced in years of actual jet flying. CG and trim. 26% set. Pre start checklist complete, Captain. It's clear to start all this craft has on board something the real one doesn't an electronic nightmare called the trouble or problem panel. Valve open. Rotation. All pressure. 13 percent. Fuel on. High EGT. Hot start. Keep it turning. Release. Okay, release. Very good procedure, Mac. Start out. Is that problem cleared? Roger. The problem's been cleared. You can now start all four engines. All right, start. Push the dial, push a button, and the craft experiences rain, snow, icing, gusty crosswinds, engine failure, electrical outages, pressure loss, or any diabolical situation. It's on. We take off, check the flick, sir. Set takeoff for us. At last, the problem panel relents enough to permit a takeoff. Call out the V speeds. 80. 90. 100. 110. 120. 130. In 15,000 hours of flying, Captain McCoy has never experienced an engine failure during actual takeoff. He'll experience it now. Flaps 10. Flaps 10. Fire, number one engine. Your airplane. Checklist. Master fire warning line. Out. Fuel shut off lever. Hold. Fuel shut off lever. Off. Fire shut off lever. Hold. Tank selector valve lever and boost pump. Off. Cross feed valve lever. Normal. Fire agent discharge switch. Hold. Fire agent low pressure line. On. The immediate action items complete, sir. My airplane, give him a call and get us a clearance. Denver approach, United Trainer 8 has had an engine fire at number one. Like that's that's very good, Mac. Number one for approach. Notify the control tower. Have men equipment standing by. To be number one for approach at Denver, notify... Any multi-engine aircraft can fly with one engine shut down. However, normal procedure calls for immediate return to base. To complete this exercise, Captain McCoy will have to take the simulator in for a landing. Zero, nine, zero at this time, we'll give you back to IRS approach. Every problem must be handled with dispatch. The crew must know not only exactly what to do, but also why. Day after day, the crew is tested. Hours of efficient flying through every possible situation. Flight rate 26 is 2,400 feet. Flight rate. Wind is calm, altimeter 300. Physically simulated, but emotionally quite real. Give us a landing card. 
set me up on the 26 ILS. ILS, Colonel, how's your weight? Yeah. Better dump some fuel. For pilots trained on the simulator, the actual airplane holds no mysteries. But when engines are switched on now, they're for real. In the final phase of training, they will log about 15 hours in the plane, accomplishing all prescribed maneuvers under the critical eye of the instructors. Even after Captain McCoy finishes his transition training and returns to line duty on this aircraft, a flight manager will accompany him for his first 25 hours of scheduled flying. By now, trainee John Newhouse is practicing as a crew member. In a few weeks, he will be ready to take the company and FAA examinations, and upon successful completion, will be assigned to the line as second officer. In an average year, the United Airlines Flight Training Center in Denver will put its pilots and some celebrities through some 50,000 training hours in simulators and about 28,000 training hours in actual aircraft, all in addition to their regularly scheduled flights. never see the man up front, but you can be confident, flying is his profession, and he is an expert.